And welcome to Immersion Church. I'm Pastor Chris Solak. We are starting a new series that will take us through the middle of this year. It's called Back to Basics. You know, last year there was a, a couple of different things that we recognized as we were doing small group, as we were doing discussion groups, and as we were meeting with people privately, is that there was this gap, this gap that existed. And, and we do speak in a very uh, spiritual perspective. We don't, we don't share messages that are just life advice. There's nothing here that's going to help you initially in the carnal. It's going gonna, it's gonna to help your walk spiritually, and then it will cross over in the carnal. And sometimes it has simultaneous benefits. So, so don't get me wrong. But when we, we, we started to have some of these conversations last year, we realized that there was a gap. And so this year, we're offering uh, really three different stages of teaching. And on the most basic level, we wanted to get back and talk about the tenets and, and the very basics of our faith. And so we're going to be talking about belief for the next couple of weeks. After that, we're going to be talking about baptism and salvation just to kind of kick things off. But we'll, we'll get into many different areas over the next few months. But I, I did want to speak to the fact that we are in the coming months. Uh, we're going we're gonna to launch a prophetic training for about 14 weeks starting in early March. And uh, we'll have more information about this. But for people who want to, to go deeper, to take, to take this step and, and really move towards Jesus and, and really work on the audible relationship with him by the Spirit, we want to offer that as well. And of course, our, our small groups will be starting up in a couple of weeks. And that's really kind of our middle ground. And so I just kind of wanted to lay that out for everybody that is, that is a part of Immersion Church, that we're kind of moving in a, in a kind of a multi-dimensional direction now, that we're, we're seeing kind of different layers of, to spiritual information and, uh, and, and just in such a way that it would help people process the direction God's taking us. And that is ultimately to come closer to Him. Everything points to Jesus, and uh, you're going to hear that, obviously, as we, as we jump here in the next few weeks. So to start with belief this morning, these next couple of weeks, talking about belief, it's really important for us to understand that we demonstrate what we believe. As Westerners, we, 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 talk, we constantly talk about conceptual belief. And it's a very dangerous concept of conceptual belief because conceptual belief can be deceptive. And you go, well, pastor, what do you mean? Conceptual belief is deceptive. You can believe you're one thing and declare with your actions that you are another. Do you know that every single decision you make, every single action you take, declares a belief system. You know, it's, it's, it's confusing for us because we believe that by, by more of a philosophic viewpoint in the West, that if I think it, it is true. And it's important that we come to the realization, first and foremost, that yes, in fact, thoughts are things. And we're going to talk about that this morning. If you would, turn with me to Matthew 6, 19 through 21. This is Jesus speaking here, says, Do not collect for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but collect for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves don't break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Okay, pastor, what are you trying to say? Yeah, that, that's talking about money. That's talking about treasure. No, it's talking about motive. And motive and belief walk hand in hand. Paul, Paul said it best, believe in the Lord and you shall be saved. Right? We, we, we come back to that verse over and over and over again. Yet the verse before says, confess with your heart. Or excuse me, confess with your mouth and believe in your heart and you shall be saved. To understand that, that confession alone is not the step of belief, but the motive and the action that come behind it. So just my first point, and I already made the declaration this morning, but thoughts are things, and by our actions, we each declare our own belief system. 
There are people that constantly tell me, well, I gave my life to Jesus. Prove it. Prove it. You have to prove it. Jesus, relationship, spiritual relationship with Jesus is evidential. Number one, you're not the same. He changes us. You can't say, well, I gave my life to Jesus and your life reflect 100% the old life. What, it, what that says is I prayed a prayer. I accepted the story. I cerebrally came to belief and I haven't changed a thing about my life. That's, that's, that's the reality that so many people declare and they go on living their lives as they always have now with the Jesus get out of hell free card in the back pocket. But that's not what it's about. And that's not belief. That's not belief. That is, that is, that is a self-deception. James said it best. Do not be a hearer of the word, but be a doer of the word. Right? Why is it that we can't just be a hearer of the word? Because our belief dictates action. It dictates action. You cannot consume the word and not be brought to a point of change in the spirit. It's impossible. Your belief, if truly changed, will change the very nature of who you are. If you are given that belief to, the, to Jesus Christ in the spirit, If you would, Joshua 24, 14 through 50, I'm reading out of the New King James here. It says, Now therefore, fear the Lord, serve him in sincerity and in truth, and put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the river and in Egypt. Serve the Lord, and if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the river, or the gods of the Amorites. Is who in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. More now than ever, we are being pressed to a point of decision as to whom we're going to serve. And it's not so much the God of the Amorites, even though we could probably make a pretty strong argument that that's still present in our time and our day and our age. But the question that most of us are struggling with in, this, in the West is, do I serve Jesus or do I serve myself? And that is the decision that you have to get up every day and make. My wife and I, we came to a conclusion before we got married that marriage, at least on the most simplistic level between her and I, was about choosing one another every single day. I'm going to tell you it's no different than with Jesus. You're going to come to the point, the fork in the road many times, and you have to choose Jesus. If, you, if you're going to live life in the Spirit, you have to choose Jesus. If your belief says, I believe in the Lord, you have to go His way, the narrow path, and, and your belief can't be just in word only. It has to be dictated by your action. So my second point this morning, that we must choose this day and every day who we will serve. Nobody else can make that decision for you and no one else will be held accountable for it but you. I know this is really basic guys, but it is so unbelievably important that we understand not only our own accountability, but that we also understand our responsibility, that there is no one to blame for the condition of your relationship with Jesus but you. You don't hear the Lord, I'm sorry. You gotta press. You say, well, well I, 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 but I just, I, 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 I had to work 60 hours. I had to do this. I had to do that. I'm going to tell you right now, you don't have to do anything. You choose 
where you put your time. You choose where you put your treasure. You choose where you put your talent. You choose the world. You choose the kingdom. You choose Jesus. You choose yourself. And this is where the battle is truly fought. This is why Jesus said, you must deny yourself, pick up your cross and follow me. That if you want to enter the kingdom of God, if you want to walk in the kingdom of God, if you want to pursue me as I am, you must believe in a way that is evidential. You must put footsteps, you must put your body, you must put your mind, you must put every part of yourself to it. Let everything that you do praise the Lord. Amen? That everything that we would do would glorify Him. That all of that our belief would declare itself by action so loudly that everyone and anyone who comes into contact with you would say, that right there is a Christian man. Right there is a Christian woman. I'll never forget my, I told many stories about my, my, my Nietzsche atheist friend, Marshall. I don't know if I ever actually ever shared the very first time that he and I met. It was actually on a Sunday morning watching the news and hanging out in the clubhouse. I didn't have a TV at the time, so that was where I got my, my, uh, my daily tube coverage. So he came in and he sat down and we started up a conversation. And all of a sudden he started to make atheist type statements. And I just made the declaration that it would he had more faith than I did. Took more faith to believe in what he was stating than what I had come to know. And he looked at me right away and he goes, you're a Christian, aren't you? Yes, I am. The evidence of my statement was very evidential to him. Just like his statements were evidential to me. I knew who he was, and he knew exactly who I was. Nobody pulled back. Nobody pulled punches. He and I had many debates. It's one of the reasons we became such close friends over the next few months. The evidence of Jesus in my life became a testimony unto his. I'll never forget the night that he called me. I had very dark thoughts. Wasn't really sure what to do with him. He was, he had some very scary impressions. His body was, was really trying to communicate some very negative impulses. And he called me. He said, Chris, I need you to come sit with me. Would you just come sit with me? So I went and I sat with him. He says, when you sit with me, when you're close to me, the room gets brighter. The negative thoughts get quieter. My belief in Jesus is atmosphere changing. Always has been atmosphere changing and my belief is no more special than anybody else's. That the presence of the Lord, my salvation, was evidential to those in torment, to those in struggle. Do you know that yours is as well? That God inhabits the praises of his people and that by our belief, do we not declare the glory of our Lord, the righteousness of our King, the power and dominion of who he is? Oh, belief. Belief is our free will choice to choose God, to choose righteousness, to choose holiness, to be set apart, to be forever changed, and to continue to change day by day, to come closer to the throne of God, to come nearer His heart. Yeah. 
John 6, 35 through 40, Jesus speaking, I am the bread of life, Jesus told them. No one who comes to me will ever be hungry. And no one who believes in me will ever be thirsty again. But as I told you, you've seen me, and yet you do not believe. Everyone the Father gives me will come to me, and the one who comes to me I will never cast out. For I have, for I have come down from heaven, and do not, uh, and not to do my will, but the will of him who sent me. This is the will of him who sent me, that I should lose none of those he has given me, but should raise them up on the last day. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. You know what's so amazing and so special about that statement? Is it the fact that those who hunger and thirst for the truth, that that is continually met? It's continually met in a way that the world doesn't have answer for. But even more, Jesus is speaking about those who have seen him, yet he makes the statement later. Blessed are those who believe and do not see. Do you know how blessed we are? Do you know how blessed our belief is in this time, this day, this age, to draw near the heart of God in such a dark time? But you have to choose Him. You have to want Him. You must desire Him by belief. Belief is not a moment. Belief is a continual expression of desire and commitment. I didn't express to my wife one time my belief in our relationship. No, I continually do loving demonstrations to declare my commitment and my desire for her. Jesus does that for us. It is important and, and I would say necessary for us to do the same to him. Belief is not a conceptual moment. It is a love language to heaven itself. How much do you love Jesus? If he's your life, should you be enveloped by him? My third and final point this morning. The point of entering into eternal life starts with this simple decision to believe Jesus. But I'm not talking about one moment. I'm talking about your life declaring a continual state of belief. A continual expression of not just belief in the sense that you acknowledge him, but that you believe him so completely to be who he says he is that you would go out and that you would do what he is doing because you love him so. That you would no longer think of yourself in that context, but you would believe so deeply within yourself that you would choose him every day that he could express his true nature through you. And therefore, your belief would be truly evidential and a fallen and broken world. We're going to talk about more of this next week and, and tie it in as we as we get into baptism in the weeks to come. Because it's very important to understand how belief and baptism and salvation, how they all tie together. They all work within one another in that same construct. That you cannot take them apart. That they all work simultaneously. So it'll be fun examining that. I just want to encourage you. It's time to examine our lives. Time to examine our belief. What do you truly believe? A lot of us are carrying and declaring beliefs that are not necessarily Jesus. They may not be anything else other than just bad programming. Unproductive beliefs. 
And I would, I would ask you to go to the Lord and ask him if there are any beliefs that you have that he would remove. Go through that step with Jesus that he would bring you closer to his heart as we go back over the basics together. Let's pray. Jesus, I just thank you so much, Lord, for, for the, the power in our creation, the, the, the divinity in our nature that was always meant to be in relationship with you, Lord, that we were never meant to be apart from you. That is the truly wondrous thing in our creation and, and the way you created us is that we have such a desperate need for you. Lord, there, there are other things that you created in the creation that were not made to be relationally connected the way we are. I'm so grateful for that. Lord, wake us up to the reality of our need for you, our need to believe in you in every area of our lives, Lord. And the places that you want to take us, the things that you want to show us, the things that you want to reveal to us, they all come by belief. We thank you, Lord, for your revelation, your awareness, your desire for each and every one of us and all God's people said. Amen. Until next week, as we talk about belief in second part, be blessed.